All right, this is uh, section 2.2, and we're going to be learning about the tangent line. Um, so some previous knowledge that's useful this, for this section is to really understand uh, slope. Um, so slope comes in many forms. Um, when we're talking about the equation of a line, uh, we talk about slope. We refer to slope as being m. Um, to find slope with two points, uh, we subtract the y values uh, and divide that by the, s the difference of the x values, which is another way of saying um, delta y over delta x. That means change in y over change in x. And then and lastly, in fun function notation, um, we would do f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. Which is the same as saying y2 minus y1, just in function notation. Um, but the function notation is really important for what we're going to be doing, so make sure that you understand that one. Uh, another thing is evaluating functions. <coughs> so if I have a function x squared plus 2x plus 5, and I want f of 1, then I plug 1 in for each value. 1 squared plus 2 times 1. Um, plus 5 would be 1 plus 2, which is 3, plus 5, which is 8. You can just plug another variable in, so instead of it being x, it's now h. And there's no way to simplify that one, so f of h is just h squared plus 2h plus 5. <coughs> and the one that students have the hardest time with, uh, f of x plus h, so you're plugging um, a whole expression in for x. So everywhere you see an x, um, you're replacing it with x plus h, so we get x plus h squared plus 2 times x plus h plus 5. And then you want to uh, FOIL out the x plus h squared, that, which is this here, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And it's a good idea to memorize that. Maybe not in this section, but in the future. Just so every time you need x plus h squared, you know what it is and you don't have to FOIL it out. Um, this 2x plus 2h was the dis distribution of 2 times x plus h and then plus 5. And you can't combine any um, like terms or anything, but this is the expanded way to write it out, uh, which we'll need to do later on. So let's practice some more. Um, We've got a different function here, x squared minus 2x plus 7, so it's going to be 0 squared minus 2 times 0 plus 7. It's just equal to 7. If we put 4 in, we get 4 squared minus 2 times 4 plus 7, so that's 16 minus 8 plus 7. 16 minus 8 is 8, plus 7 is 15. Uh, putting h in, I'm just going to get h squared minus 2h plus 7. <coughs> and x plus h, I'll get x plus h squared minus 2 times x plus h plus 7. Now to expand that out, it's going to be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. That's this part here. And distributing the negative 2, I get minus 2x minus 2h plus 7. Alright, so uh, now that we're warmed up, average velocity is the change in position over the change in time, or slope. So if you're asked to find the average velocity between two points, you're essentially finding the slope. As opposed to instantaneous velocity, that's the velocity at a certain time. Now that's what we're going to be building up to, but we're going to start by just looking at um, average velocity first. <coughs> In this picture, we're, um, we have a line drawn between points 1.084 and the point 1.564. Um, so here are the two points here, and we've got a line drawn through them. Now we can't talk about slope of a curve, right? We can only talk about slope of a straight line. But if we drew a straight line between two points on a curve, we can approximate the slope or the rate of change. So um, 
these lines that we draw on the curve are called secant lines. So average velocity can be found by taking the slope of a secant line between two points on a curve. So let's find the average velocity between 1, 0 and 0.5, negative 2 on this graph. So 1, 0 is this point here and 0.5, negative 2 is this point right here. So if I draw a secant line through those two points, it looks like so. So I want to find the slope of that secant line, so we call that m secant. So that's going to be the change in y values, so that y value goes from negative 2 to 0 over the change in x values, so 0.5 minus 1. So it's negative 2 over negative 0.5, which is equal to positive 4. So that's the slope of that secant line. When you see the words get close, gets closer to, this often means that limit process is involved. So it turns out as the two points used to find the secant line get closer together until they're practically the same point, you get a tangent line at that point. So this is a picture um, of what's going on. So we start off and we're drawing a secant line way over at Q, between P and Q. And then as we get closer to P, so my secant lines, have a point that um, is a little bit closer to the p-value, then I can even get closer than that. I can get so close that we can't even hardly tell the difference between p and the other point. Um, so this is the limit process. We're looking at the limit as the slope of the tangent line um, gets closer to the slope. Um, Actually, the slope of the secant lines gets closer to the slope of the tangent line. Um, so the tangent line drawn here, I'll highlight it, it's this kind of orangey looking line. This is the tangent line at P. But we see that our secant lines start looking closer and closer to that tangent line using the limit process. Um, to try to understand this a little bit better, we're going to click on this um, applet and see if it works. Okay. Uh, so this is something that you can play with. Um, so we're going to drag this point right here and we're going to get it closer. Now I want you to watch the, um, the slope. So the slope is 1.34 right now. Um, I don't know if you can see my cursor. But as I drag this, the slope is changing because my secant line is changing. And then when I get right on that point, it says the slope is 0 over 0. Very interesting. So again, I'll drag it away and drag it back. It doesn't know how to handle it when I get right on the point because that's actually a tangent line. And we can also drag this on the other side. So it doesn't matter if you're on the left side of the curve or the right side of the curve. Well, that's what's happening. You know, you're, you're, you're just drawing uh, secant lines closer and closer and closer um, with a point closer and closer and closer to the point that you're interested in until there's hardly any difference at all. And we could guess that the slope of the t tangent line of this one that's about as close as I can get before it just says 0 over 0. The slope is about 0 0.6 of that tangent line. Alright, let's go back here. Um, so I, I welcome you to, to play with that a little bit to try to get a better understanding. So instantaneous velocity that I said that we were building up to is the slope of the tangent line to the graph. So if we know what the slope of the tangent line is, then we have instantaneous velocity. All right, so tangent lines. Um, learning how to draw them can be a little bit tricky. So we're going to draw three tangent lines at these, no, four tangent lines at these four points. Let's start at negative four. I'm going to actually plot a point right there at 
at negative 4, negative 2. And then I'm going to draw a little circle that goes through that point. And my circles might not be that great because I'm trying to draw on a computer screen, but um, we're going to draw a center of that circle and then a line that goes um, from the center to the point on the on the graph. So it's it's a radius of a circle. Um, then the tangent line is going to be perpendicular to that line we just drew. So your tangent line is going to look like so. So we're going to do that four more times to hopefully you get a better idea. So negative 1.5 is the um, point on the curve is right here. If I draw my... <laughs> let me put that... start over. It's getting wonky on me. If I draw my circle there in the center of the circle, I don't know if it's going to let me draw the center of the circle, and a line out to the point, and then a line perpendicular to it, there's my tangent line. Now at 1, so 1 is about negative 3, and I'm going to draw my circle inside the curve. So you might have been wondering that, if, I'm, if you're drawing it inside or outside. And you do draw it inside the curve. Um, draw my center, and then we want a line going between them. Oops. To do a couple undos here. Okay, there we go. I'm afraid I'm going to have to start this one over too. <coughs> it's a badly drawn circle. Alright, and then so my tangent line is going to be perpendicular to that, so it's going to look like so. And then the last one, too, is going to kind of, uh, let me get rid of this circle. It's going to be in my way. I'm going to draw a circle right inside there with the center. Line between the center and uh, the point on the graph, and then tangent line. So you'll notice that the tangent lines right at the very top of the curve and at the bottom of the curve um, have a slope of zero. Uh, the tangent line at drawn at negative four has a slope of about one. So I'll say like a, m is approximately one. Uh, the slope of this one is zero. It doesn't ask us for the slopes, but I think it's important to talk about it. And the slope of that one is zero. And then the one um, at, at one um, that's a negative slope, and it looks like it's about uh, negative 2. You know, using rise over run, it looks like I'm going up about 2 squares and over to the left one. So to draw a tangent line, here are the instructions. You're going to plot the point where you're going to draw the tangent line. Draw a small circle inside the graph at the point you drew in step one as part of the circumference of the circle. And at the center of the circle, draw a dot. Draw a line from the point on the graph to that dot. Now on the outside of the curve, draw a line perpendicular to the one you drew in step four. And that's it for now. That's probably enough um, to get you started in thinking about tangent lines and thinking a little bit more too about the limit process.